Oh, well, listen, when you see the yellow tape, you know you're going to have an interesting package, at least on this channel. Inside this box is something unexpected, but also expected. I just didn't expect to see it as soon as it arrived here. So let's go ahead and unbox this and see what we're dealing with. Today's episode is brought to you by Paris Roan and their new affordable 4K projector. You can pick this thing up for under 500 bucks with the code that's gonna be down in the description of this video. So you're getting 4K UHD resolution up to 200 inches projected. You've also got 24 watts of audio power via a dual speaker setup, 600 lumens of brightness and 40,000 hours of lamp life. So not only do you have Android TV, you've also got autofocus built in. So you just basically point this thing at the wall and it does the rest. Wi-Fi 6 is built in, Bluetooth 5, and a bunch of connectivity via HDMI 2.1, USB-A, USB-C, and even Ethernet LAN. So if you've been holding off looking at a 4K projector so you can have movie night and blow the screen up big, this might get you interested because that price point is much lower than it normally is. Coming in with today's code in the description at under 500 bucks, I personally haven't seen a 4K capable projector with Android TV at that price previously. So there you have it. That is the Paris Roan 4K UHD projector on a special promotion right now for Unbox Therapy viewers. So if you guys are curious, definitely go check out the details down in the description. Will asked me, he's like, hey, you wanna check this thing out? And I was like, absolutely, because it is probably, no, it's definitely our closest exposure yet to something you can buy that resembles the Apple Vision Pro. And believe it or not, this is currently being sold in China. I don't know what the price is in China. I just know it's expensive to get it sent over here. Now, obviously, it is not official. Obviously, this has nothing to do with Apple other than Apple being the inspiration for a copycat style product. But it is amazing how quickly these parties can work to create these replicas when it comes to high profile products and specifically Apple products. Now this is a working product as well. This is not like just a mock up the shape and design. This is a product that actually works as a headset mimicking everything about Apple's eventual Vision Pro. You can see some interesting stickers, a QR code. I think we can remove those. Now, see this material here, it's made to look like it's fabric, but it's not. It has the texture of fabric. It is not fabric. And probably what happened here is there was a, like an existing headset. And as soon as Apple's event finished, they were like, okay, we need to create a design and then jam our existing components into it so that it is as comparable to a Vision Pro so we can charge as much money as possible for it. Inside, we have some little protectors on each of the lenses, some volume controls, probably some speakers and mics, a USB-C connector on this side. This is our headband, which looks like a sort of typical VR headset headband. It's not the fancy Apple headband that you saw in their event. Although these points do pivot slightly. We've got some other dedicated controls which are familiar for anyone who has used any Android based headset. So menu, selector and back. There's a snapshot button on the top for photos. Now when you look at the front, it's a bit of a dead giveaway that this is certainly not a Vision Pro because you've got these two prominent cameras where on the Vision Pro, you would not see these. They have supplied a user guide and a couple more components, including a USB cable, a USB power brick, and I believe here is your controller. Now this is wired exclusively by the looks of it. So this is gonna plug into the side of your headset like this. That's probably how you're also gonna charge your headset. Weird that it's on the left side, or is that weird? I don't know. Anyway, it's on the left side. You have a large okay button, trigger style button, a joystick, menu, and back. So the interface is gonna be controlled via 
this controller. Now, can we, what can we do inside of Android? What kind of special Apple-esque features have, have been mimicked in the software? We're gonna find out. Maybe the manual will let us know what we can do. Function, homepage, composition. I mean, it looks like it has an actual AR interface. Uh, multitask use, Windows settings, close the window, screen recording, cool. So we're gonna record what it looks like in there so you guys can get a better idea. Immersion office, Bluetooth devices, I mean, it's a very low tech Android version. And I'm not saying that Android headsets are low tech, I'm saying this one is because it's not from a major manufacturer. Maybe it's not, I don't know, I haven't tried it yet, but my assumption is it's put together rather um, quickly in order for it to look like the Vision Pro, right? So like how refined can the experience really be? With no brand, like there's no brand on anything. There's no brand on the packaging, no brand on the device itself. Does it have, does it even have power? Oh, it's booting up. I just saw the Android logo. Do these lenses have adjustment? Because it is feeling as though, I don't know what it's doing right now. It's some sort of loading thing. Okay. Well, it's in Chinese right now, obviously. The, the resolution is actually pretty decent. Oh yeah, there it is, record, I got it. Okay, so I can actually see the icon now that showcases the fact that I'm recording. So you're probably seeing what I'm seeing. I have, like I said, local player music camera, settings, app store folders, Safari, photos, and my apps. Let's go ahead and just launch into photos here. Oh, here we go. So we have some cool existing photos, like panoramic style photos. Can I expand that? I think so, let's expand it. Oh, nice. So now this photo is surrounding us myself, yourself. I don't know, I'm supposed to be on like the moon or something. This interface is not as bad as I expected. It's kind of snappy actually. Not what I expected to find on something that looks like this. Some interface components are messed up. Like you see, I can't even see this expand button here. Ooh, this is nice. I'm in like a, what? what is this? Some sort of peace garden situation here. This is nice. So the headset is kind of heavy. I can't imagine that Apple's product is going to be this weight. It's going to be lighter. I know they thought a lot about that. Hence some of their decisions with materials and things like that. All right. So those photos are pretty cool. I mean, I presume you could put your own photos in there obviously, but the only thing is it, you get that black screen. It just blacks out when you transition sometimes back to the menu. No videos, no pictures. Oh, with pictures. Yes. No. No videos and no music. Well, there's an app store here. It's definitely not Play Store. It seems to indicate I can download Apple TV Plus, Netflix. This is not the Play Store by any means. What are these, Lobby? Whoa, spaces are kind of weird. Oh, the whole thing, the like refresh is weird now. Like super jittery. I'm, I, I hope that this comes through on the screen recording. Oh, that jittery is just pain. It is just painful. And now it's gone for some reason. Most of the jitter. Now we have a web browser. Safari reality. Oh, this is a comfortable room. I don't mind this room. We got some Billy Billy right here. This is definitely not Safari. And I don't know what I should watch here. So how do I, I scrolled my head. That is so strange. Should I fire that round or what? This thing is creeping so far to the left. Now I'm all the way over here again. <laughs> you go to this page, you can see Safari Reality has the Firefox uh, logo. Because <laughs> it's actually Firefox. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, Billy Billy. I don't, I, I mean, this is obviously what's hot on Billy Billy right now. Yeah, that was hot content right there. Uh, listen guys, listen. I mean, you know, the hardware is pretty decent. Like the the actual display sharpness 
the headset itself is extremely heavy on the nose. Like I, yo, check the markings, check the, like, look at that. That's not, that's not fun. Kind of weird the way the nose even fits in there. I don't, yeah. I don't think it's designed for me specifically. It's rigid, even though it's trying to look like it's fabric, but it does go to show you just how rapidly the ecosystem of replica products, how, how quickly that, that market is capable of churning out something so heavily inspired by and mimicking the Vision Pro, which doesn't even exist yet in consumers' hands. I don't mind the look of it. Like it actually looks pretty decent as far as headsets go, but it's heavier than what Apple's gonna build. It's less comfortable than what Apple's gonna build. And obviously the interface leaves something to be desired as you just witnessed. I mean, it has a controller, all right? Don't forget that. You got a joystick and you got an okay button. Somebody let me know. I mean, if you guys are in China, because obviously I didn't buy this directly from the marketplace there, let me know what this is going for price-wise in US dollars. I'm curious because like I said, the software is lacking. It is based on Android. You wonder what you could do with it. If you could get a Play Store on there, would anything even work? But this is certainly not Apple's Vision Pro. It is the closest you're gonna get. Ow. <laughs> kind of hurts on there, man.